Many times that we use vacuum filtration to collect a solid, we're vacuuming out water. So our sample is considered quite wet with water. So the first thing we'd want to do after vacuum filtration is to measure the mass of the Buchner funnel with the filter paper in our solid. So we tear out the balance, set that on there, record the mass in our notebook. This is the wet mass. The next step in oven drying to constant mass is to actually place your sample in the oven, which is in the back of the room. Now you'll note that there is a note placed here that says, to prevent decomposition, do not leave samples overnight. So that's a good rule of thumb. You might need to come back to lab and you're welcome to do so. Just don't forget and leave your sample in so that it's in overnight. The oven door twists and opens. Then take your sample and find a spot for it. Close it up and then let your sample stay in the oven for a good 30 minutes to 60 minutes for the first drying portion. The more water we drive off in this first session, the better off we'll be. So you might find it convenient to put your sample in and then go to a class in TESTA and then come back out to check the mass. So 60 minutes is a nice first drying time to get rid of most of the water. So after that first 60 minute drying period, come back to lab, remove your sample, take it out, let it cool, and then go measure the mass again. Now let's measure the mass. We'll let the drift settle. 17.753 grams. So if I've recorded my wet mass in my notebook, I would have that there. And after I have dried the sample, I would record that mass. Okay. And now we want to look for a difference of less than 0 0.020 grams, less than or equal to. So we need to do some basic math. This difference, if I subtract the second from the first, is 0 0.439 grams. That's a lot more than 0 0.020 grams. So I must need to keep drawing and get another measurement and keep doing the subtraction between the last two masses until I meet that benchmark. So my sample is going back into the oven. Now since we found that our sample lost a lot of mass, that means it lost quite a bit of water in that first drying period. Now in the second one, we're going to see if more water is continued to be lost. Put it back in, close it up, and let it sit in here now for a good 10 to 15 minutes. Then we'll check the mass again. We're looking for the mass to stay constant or within our benchmark for that for this class, which is a loss of less than or equal to 0 0.020 grams. After another 15 minutes in the oven, the new mass off the balance, which I'll spare you looking at, obtaining or measuring, was 17.658 grams, so much closer to the second one than we were after the first drying process but we need to check to see just how close. So if you do this math, the difference between mass number two and three is now 0.095 grams. Okay, so much closer, but still that's greater than the threshold of the difference being less than or equal to 0.020 grams. So I need to dry it again, so back into the oven. So once again, sparing you watching, at 315, I measured the mass again of our sample, and it was found to be 17.646. When I take this dif difference, now I'm within range. The difference between those masses is 0.012 grams, and that of course is less than 0 0.020 grams, so we're going to call this good enough to be considered constant for this class.